Hi everyone, I'm Sean Gibb, I'm the Events and Marketing Manager here at Pro Manchester and I'm delighted to welcome you to this Census Special. I'm joined by Jessica Sharp, a part of the Manchester Census team, and I'll hand over to Jessica uh, for her to introduce herself. Hi everybody, um, thank you for inviting me to this Census Special. I'm, uh, I'm really um, happy to be here and I really uh, want to explain to you all the feeling about the Census. Uh, but myself, I have a history, I have um, worked in local government and central government and I have used the census data um, to inform so many things so yeah I'm really excited to be here and talk about the census with you Pure. Oh wonderful so Jessica uh, perhaps you could start by telling us what is the census um, and why is it so important? Well the census is I guess um, in itself a count it's the count of the people and a snapshot of what's happening in our country right now. So censuses have been happening every 10 years for the last 200 years. And I guess the first kind of like reference to the census would probably be in the Bible. Um, and I guess what uh, why Jesus was born in Bethlehem is because um, he, again, he was a part of the census. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's about getting a snapshot and data on the state of the country on a particular day. So census day is the 21st of March. And this data is really brilliant for genealogists and historians, but actually the government need it so that um, it's how um, money is distributed. It's the kind of, uh, I guess, baseline data that the government uses to divide up money and distribute it across the country. Um, and how services and things like schools, hospitals are funded um, and by allocation, really. Um, this census is particularly important because there's a lot of decisions and choices that the government's going to have to make following this pandemic. Um, and they need the right information in order to do that. And um, the information that they're dealing with right now is 10 years old. Um, the census is so important that it's actually a legal requirement um, to do, and you'll get fined if you don't do it. Whereas you think elections, which obviously changes the shape of the country, even the Brexit vote, that was not mandatory, but the census is mandatory because that's how important it actually is. So that's what the census is and why it's important. And, and why now? Everybody might think, well, it's a silly time to do a census because we're in the middle of a pandemic and everybody, but I think now is actually, and I thought that first, but actually now is actually the most important time to do it because the decisions that are gonna be made about our country coming out of Brexit, coming out of all of these things and need to be based on really solid information about who's in this country, who we are, what we are, where we are right now. So, it's really important that it's done now. Um, I think the other part of it is, can you imagine when the census data is released a hundred years time, people will be looking at the census data and actually be so interested in it because it's in the middle of a pandemic. So this is, even though it's an inconvenient time to do it in the sense of like we're all running around because there's a pandemic, it's actually a really important time to do it because the information is going to be the baseline of so many important decisions for our country. And how do people complete the census? Well, the census this time round is going to be the first digital census. Um, and I think if people remember back, if they're that old enough, um, you know, 10 years ago and the 10 years before that, it was a paper format. You, you filled it in, it came to the household and you filled it in. But this time, but on the paper, and then you return it by post. But this time around, it's going to be the first digital census. Um, and what will happen is you'll get a code through your door, and hopefully everybody's received a code already. You go online, you enter that code in for your household, and you fill out the questions. Because it's a digital one, it's actually easier to fill out because there's all the stuff around predictive text that will be there. Um, it will take you and route you into... So if you answer a question, and, and, and therefore, and you don't, so you might put down, you don't work, then it won't ask you questions about how you travel to work. So it kind of bypasses it and makes it quicker and only provides you with the relevant questions you need, rather than when you've got a paper format and it goes, 
if you've answered no, go to go to this section and that it bypasses all of that. So it's actually really, really easy um, to fill out. I, and I guess it being a digital sensor, some people might think, oh, my goodness, some people don't have that digital capability of doing it and be worried about that. But it's it's a digital first sensors, but it's not a digital only sensors. So paper copies can be available. Um, so you can just call the help, the national helpline, which is a free phone number. Um, and you can call up and request a paper copy, or um, you can um, fill it out by, um, so that's how you can get it. But some people in rural areas, I think 10% of the whole population have actually already been given a paper copy sent straight away. So places where there's got low um, connectivity um, and areas where the, uh, the government have deemed as being areas of um, digital exclusion, they've already been given paper copies. And when you get a reminder, just in case you haven't done it, you'll also get a paper copy. So it's not, it's digital first, but it's not digital only. I think that's probably the most important thing to say. And um, what, what other assistance is available to, to help people to complete the, the census if either yeah. of those options aren't, aren't viable? Yeah, I mean, what's really come out, out of this pandemic really is, and what will, and the data will show this, is about um, digital exclusivity and about how hard it is going to be for people. Um, so what the Office of National Statistics have done um, to combat that, and because people are shielding as well, not being able to get the help, is that there is a national helpline and this helpline actually provides um, a, what we call telephone capture. So for those who um, don't have access to a digital device, I mean, you can actually fill it on your mobile phone as well, um, uh, can't access that or have trouble doing that, um, you could call the national helpline and somebody will be able to read the questions to you and you can answer and they'll capture that for you and they'll uh, record the information. There's also a separate um, language line which will provide translators in 49 different community languages that you can call up if you've got problems with um, you know needing language assistance as well. Um, there's also information and translation on um, the website as well so you can get um, translated information. There's um, sign language videos as well, um, easy read, braille, um, and the whole host of um, accessible things that you can get via um, the internet. But because it is a digital census, what's really great is you, if you can't keep it out or you want someone to help you um, fill it out, you can do that also. So for instance, my parents right now are in London, I'm in Manchester, they're shielding at the moment and their language um, isn't, their English isn't as good as, um, um, and then they're not that confident with their English. So what they've done is they've um, given me their code and I've talked them through it over the phone and I filled it out for them digitally. And that just means that, so we're asking um, other members of the family to help other members, friends, families, to help them fill it out as well. So that's, that's what's really good about it being digital. If it was paper, I don't think I could have done that for them. I'd have to go down to London, collect that paper and you know do it. So that's why being, it being digital actually does really help that way as well. So lots of options then. Um... And then, you know, once once you've you, you've completed your census, what then? How, how is the data going to be stored? What's really amazing about what's happening with this census, because it's digital, and um, this the information comes straight away. So it's not somebody getting all this paper and 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 you know processing all of that data. It's it is instant as well. So normally what happens in the previous census is taken about two years before any of that information is, is collated and and, and put away um, and stored so and then given out, you know, to, to be used. But because it's digital, information is going to be um, ready for within a year. So that's brilliant. But also what they do is they take the data and they um, take away everybody's name from it and their addresses. And what they do is they, they process that data so that it's nominized and only you then can be used. And then it's stored for a hundred years. And then after a hundred years, the, the data is then released and then genealogists can have a go at looking at you know, what we've put down and, and it, it'll probably be on a, a future version of who do you think we are? You know, that kind of stuff. So that's what's happened. But the data is stored and it's completely safe. It's not used for any, it's not, it, nobody can attach 
a person to their census return because it is actually all the names have been taken away and then it's generalized so people are absolutely worried about you know can this data be used for other things no it's not with office of national statistics hold that data and it's not shared by any other government organization like home office or anything that people can be worried about it's completely safe and then i think you touched on it a little bit there but but how else is is the data going to be used and and, and for what purposes the data is going to be used for so many things and it, it, it formulates the foundation on which um, funding, government funding is allocated. So when we talk about the North-South divide, when we talk about, you know, it's actually headcount. So every local authority, you know, they're getting money for how many people live within their local authority. So that's why the count is just so important. But also the data is used to analyze certain things like, you know, to, to do for like bus routes, you know, planning for those things, planning for this new population of, of um, schools as well, you know, where there's, where there's more children, but also looking at things like um, elderly people and older, as our, gener as our uh, population age, they might need different bespoke services. So for instance, um, um, since last census, some of the data has been used so that um, in hospital, in certain hospitals, um, they have imams there, um, instead of chaplains, instead of Christian chaplains, they've had a demand because that's actually more appropriate for that community. Um, it's, it's also kind of bespoken things. So when we look at um, things in the future, such as um, care homes, you know, we're looking at what kind of care homes they should be. Um, uh, this last week I read that it was a, there was um, the first LGBTQ plus care home had opened up in London specifically for that community. So we need to look at how our, how our country is aging, how our country is changing, and look about developing services appropriate for that. But that's what government uses the data for. But businesses, this data is also available for businesses, and businesses can apply for government grants, government funding, and even look at their own, their own bespoke services based upon this data. This data is a wealth of information. Um, I kind of look at data in a certain way. Um, I'm a data geek, I'm a data analyst. I used to work um, for the NHS doing um, data analyst as well. And one of the things is data is key. And a lot of businesses pay for data, but actually the census is free data for businesses that they can analyze and use if they can do it in the right way to help promote their businesses, look at how they're recruiting, because some of the census data that will come out will be about ethnicity, it will be about um, um, sexual, um, um, LGBT plus communities, it will be about all different types of community, and it will also be about the makeup of the family unit as well, which is quite interesting. You know, it'll be about numbers of um, single families, um, you know, single households as well. So I used to work for um, a food company and one of the things um, that they looked at was, you know, the kind of packaging that they would, you know, should they do a family pack or should they do, um, you know, packs for two or one? Well, the census data will give you that information because it will tell you how many, um, you know, single households there are. Is that growing? Is that comparative to the last 10 years? So people can begin to analyze this data in different ways to help their businesses as well. And a lot of businesses have, and a lot of businesses have used it to apply for government funding as well. That's another thing that's really um, important about the census data, how um, where there's pots of community and pots of government funding, um, if businesses are clever enough to um, apply census data to that, it supports their application as well. Um, and it's brilliant because this data is going to be out really soon as well. And why is it important to be specific with the data that you provide? Because um, I always kind of think about data and think about things about um, a lot of companies um, uh, pay for marketing, they pay for surveys to be done and things like that. But often what you get is what I call the trip advisor effect. So you either get people um, saying they love something or they hate something. You know, there's nothing in between. There's, you know, the, the marketing material you get is nothing in between. And with the census data, because everybody has to do it, everybody has to do it, it's generalized data. 
and how that data comes out is really, really important, how you fill out that form. So you can be really specific in the form. You can say, oh, um, because of some of the questions are compulsory and some of the comp questions are voluntary. So the LGBTQ plus question about your um, identity, you can bypass that or you can include it. If you include that question, you're contributing to your community and you're helping um, shape you know, the understanding of your community. So that's why it's really important to be specific. So um, if you put um, your religion, you might wanna put other and be specific about what sect in that religion that you are. Um, you know, and so, th so there's, there's opportunities within the census to be specific. And the more specific you are, the more you help your community. That's, that's why it's important. Um, and, and what other benefits are there for particular communities to complete the census? Um, there's really lots of reasons why you should be, but for particular communities that feel underrepresented, the census is that opportunity to really identify and stand up and say, hey, we're here, look after us, we've got certain needs. Um, there's the, for the first time ever, the question about veterans has been put on and you, you have served in the armed forces. So that's really important because if you think about it, we need to ensure that our veterans are looked after. So we need to know it, where they are, who they're, what, where they're about, about, if there's a, a large cluster of them in a certain area in the country, you know, are we providing services for them? You know, are there aging veterans as well are we providing services for them so it's all about being the more that we answer it and the more that we put specifically aware of this that then that means that the services that we provide or not provide is highlighted because if we can then look at the census data and go actually you know there's not enough apprenticeships being offered to young um to young asian communities it will come out in that census if, if a large proportion of um th the data that comes out in census says that is unemployed certain part of the country has a, a large section of their community missing out on something that's why it's really really important for those communities to stand up be specific and say who you are and be identified and be counted well Thank you so much for your time today, Jessica. Um, remember everyone, Census Day is this Sunday, March the 21st, but you complete your you can complete yours um, as soon as you get your access code in the post. And um, please support and encourage others to do so as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.